guys, it's Mrs. C here with Cycle 3, week 18. I don't know about you all, but it was a rough week this week. <laughs> we have been in Zoom for the past couple weeks, and then we had we switched a week because of snow to have our go ahead and have our spring break week. And then I had been gone the week before any of all that um, because of a little trip that I took. And so it feels like it's been forever, and I forgot everything I knew, I feel like. <laughs> And uh, I think the kids forgot how to be in class a little bit too, but we got through it. It was fine. It was good. It was really great to be back. So anyway, uh, let's jump right in. So for geography this week, we have the um, Western Rivers and um, I had not highlighted them on the map in class for the kids. I let them draw this week um, just because it's a little easier to trace the rivers than it is to outline a state or anything. So um, I let them draw that. I pointed to them up on the board first, and then we went over them um, another time and pointed to each of them. And then I had um, these cards, which I, these are nothing special. I laminated, they're, they were so used. I laminated um, pieces of construction paper forever ago, just little squares, and um, they just kind of act like dry erase. So I put each of our rivers or river and one lake on there and pass them out to each kid. And um, I have I had only six kids today and only five cards, so we did it a couple of times, so everybody got a turn. And I joked that we were gonna, they were gonna try to find the river before I could. So they turned their car over and read me what river or lake that they had on there. And then I um, tried to find it before they could all find it. So. Uh, that was really fun. They really enjoyed doing that. And of course, you know, you have to play it up and pretend that you can't find it or you can't remember. And when they had Great Salt Lake, I pointed over to Lake Michigan and, you know, they thought that was funny. So we did that a few different times and they just pointed to the rivers or the lake each time. And then we went over them one last time as I was collecting the maps. So that's what we did for geography. Um, for timeline, this week, since we hadn't been in class for a few weeks, I um, hid my timeline cards around the room and saying through that as they found the timeline cards. Um, if you haven't ever done that before, it's a really easy, fun thing to do and it gets them up out of their seat. But I just hide them around the room. I don't hide them really hard because the point isn't that they have to really struggle to find them. And everybody gets one card. When they get a card, they're supposed to come sit back down. A lot of times they help their friend find a card if they don't have a card yet. but. Then they come sit back down and then I go through the timeline in order and when it's their card, they hand me their card. Um, and then as we're collecting, as I'm collecting the cards and laying them out, I uh, show them the hand motion for it. So we have Cherokee Trail of Tears. So you're gonna kind of make an F like a feather and you're gonna touch your nose and then you're gonna go back to your ear. So this is for Cherokee. And then Trail of Tears, we're gonna take four fingers, kind of wiggle it on our cheek um, for to show the tears running down our face. So Cherokee Trail of Tears. And then we have U.S. Westward Expansion. This one's super easy. You're just going to make a W and you're going to move it across your body. I think it actually goes this way. It really depends because if you're facing your class, you, West would be one way. If you're looking at a map, West is the other way. But I think it goes across your body like this. Okay. So W and move Westward. All right. And we have Marx publishes the Communist Manifesto. So um, you're going to kind of like punch up in the air like this for communists. I, uh, supposedly this is a communist kind of greeting that they do. I don't know. Um, but so we're going to kind of punch up. So Marx publishes the communist and then we're going to write on our hand for the manifesto because it was written out. Okay. Then the compromise, we've done this when we did the Missouri compromise, we are going to take our thought from our brain and we're going to line it up with our friends and it's going to be the same. So the compromise of 1850 and then the Dred Scott decision, it um, stated that he was still a slave. So we're going to cross our hands like they're bound together um, for the Dred Scott decision. We have U.S. restores trade with Japan. So we kind of... Um, like we did when um, we said immigrants fought to America, we kind of stirred our melting pot. So we're gonna do that again for the US and then we're gonna do trade and you kind of are giving money and taking and trading, you know, I like this and you like that and we're gonna trade it. So trade and then we're gonna do our sign for Japan, which is kind of like, it's almost like you're making a croissant shape, but um, 
or crescent shape. I, everything's food with me. <laughs> so we're just going to kind of go this for the shape of Japan and its islands that it kind of makes. So uh, then we have British Queen. So Brit Britain, you're going to take your hand. You're going to act like you're shaking hands like this. So British Queen of V for Victoria's rule over India. And we're going to point just like we do um, we haven't done India for a while in our timeline. It seemed like we were doing it a lot earlier, but so we're going to point right here to our bindi dot like they were in India. It's rule over India. And then Darwin publishes the origin of species. This one's kind of long. I used to have my class do a D, but they don't do that on the timeline song. So if you want to, you can, because there's space, but if you want to just be official, you're going to take one hand and this is going to be your key and this is going to be your lock and you're going to stick your key into your lock and turn it because um, the origin of species was they thought they had figured out the key to unlocking all of creation and science. So Darwin publishes the origin of species. So that was timeline this week. Um, for math, we are continuing on with our geometry song. Um, so I am just kind of building every week with this. Uh, they've heard the full song a few times now. Um, and I've sent them the link to it, which I'll post below, but I'll sing the song for in its entirety for you here. And, um, and then I'll tell you what I did just to kind of go over it. So our song goes, the area of a rectangle equals length times width. The area of a square equals length of its side squared S squared. The area of a triangle equals one half base times height. The area of a circle equals pi times the radius squared. The circumference of a circle equals two times pi times the radius. So that is the geometry song. Um, if you want to hear someone sing it much better than I do, you can look at the link down in the description. Um, so as I build on each week, we do our hand motions for it and I stop and very slowly go over the area of a triangle equals one half base times height. That is the probably the most complicated out of all of them to get. So um, we say it slowly. And again, they've heard the song a few times now because we've been doing this every week. So they are pretty confident in what they, they know to say. But I slow it down. And then just to switch it up this week, we did it while jumping. And then we bent over and touched our toes and set it while touching our toes. And then we balanced on one leg, kind of like leaning forward on one leg. And then we tried to lean backwards with one leg sticking up in the air and say it. So just kind of did a little bit of math exercise while we were singing our song. So that's what we did for math this week. For history, um, we have Pearl Harbor, which they did this one to the tune of the Ants Go Marching, which made it so much easier to remember and sing from memory because I'm getting really confused with all the dates and singing this one from memory. So um, I sang it for the kids and as I was singing and I was getting ready to do, um, I was just going to have a sing and march around like the ants go marching. But as I'm doing it, I hear them whisper, please do the funny vo words. Please do the funny words. And you guys, I can't help it. They love it. So that's what I did again. I'm sorry. I try to do different things to give you all different ideas, but they really love the silly words on the history songs. And I, I, who am I? Who am I to argue? All right. So I did silly words. I will try to remember what words I did. I didn't plan them out because again, I'm trying to do different things, but they just love it. So, um, I'm trying to, I'm even trying to remember what I did. I think I said on dinosaur seven, um, and then I said the ninjas and then I said Pearl Houston and then I was like oh you're right it's not Pearl Houston it's Pearl Harbor Houston and they were like no it's Hawaii uh, and then I used one from a few weeks ago when we had the United States in our history sentence which I had changed to Uranus Saturn so I said that again and then I changed allies to aliens. And then I, instead of World War II, I think I said, I'm trying to remember what I said. I think I said jujitsu or something like that. Anyway, it does not have to make sense in any way, shape or form. I do try sometimes to try to make them sound similar just to help them get the right words in, but you literally can replace them with anything you want to. I like to incorporate rumble still skin in as much as I can because it's just a funny word, but anyway. That's what we did for history. Um, again, 
if you, this happens to be the first time you've watched this, what I do is I start from the beginning. And so I'll say on dinosaur seven, 1941, and they stop me and they correct me. And I said, Oh, you're right. It's on December 7th, 1941, the ninjas bombed. And they'll say, no, and I'm like, oh, you're right. On December 7th, 1941, the Japanese bombed. So I go over, I start all the way from the beginning each time and go on until I hit the next silly word. And then we start over. So at the end, we're saying the sentence fully and in its entirety correctly. So for Latin, I brought in some little finger puppets. I hadn't used these in forever. And um, I think I got these at Ikea a really long time ago, but I've got like whores, I've got little people, all different ones. I just let them pick whichever um, finger puppet they wanted. And we taught our puppets Latin today. So I let them do whatever voice they wanted to do for their puppet. And so I would, I was just talking to my puppet. I think I have the queen that I have in here. And I would say, all right, queen. In Latin, we're going to say, et lux in tenebris lucet. And my little queen would say, et lux in tenebris lucet. And I would say, great. That means, and the light shineth in the darkness. And she would say, and the light shineth in the darkness. So I would have them, I was having them do that with their puppets. And then we went around the room and I would have their puppet you know, supposedly say, okay, Graham, can your puppet tell me what it says in Latin? And so then he would say it in Latin with this puppet. And then I'd go to the next kid and say, and Malachi, what does that mean in English? And then his puppet would say it in English. And we went around the table and did that today. So um, we are learning it to the King Thing song and our morning assembly. And that's what we play during review time. And I'm just amazed at some of them. Uh, you can tell they're listening at home, um, but they have the song pretty much all the way down. So um, that's what we did for Latin today. For science, we are doing it to the tune of Shake It Off. So it's our last four elements today. Um, I also am using a visual for them. Uh, I found these on the Tudor Facebook page. Um, they're awesome. She's got all 12 of them. And they are mnemonic devices, so they just help you remember, like, the beginning. So, for example, I'm thinking sodium salt, so I was confused at first when I saw a needle and thread, because I was like, mm, that's not salt. I didn't think salt made up. I was thinking maybe it was the, excuse me, the metal and the needle initially, and then I went, oh, so, sodium. Okay, so, so, knee, neon, and the magnet for magnesium. So, they are not pictures of what's in there. They're mnemonic devices. So um, I laid these out and we pointed to them as we sang. Um, I think for our, our end of year ceremony, we are going to try to do this as a class for our presentation. And I might see if I can get permission to blow these up and have each kid hold them as bigger cards. So um, I really love these again for the mnemonic devices. We uh, do, I do try to make sure to talk about you know, that our numbers are always going up, the mass is going up, and any way that I can help them remember. So, um, a fluorine is F again. We have neon, N-E, and then sodium. I was like, sodium doesn't make any sense why it's N-A. And if you know why it's N-A, you can leave in the comments down below so that I can learn something. I don't know why it's N-A, but that's what it is. So I was just telling them that that's just one we're gonna have to stick into our brains. And so I had them put their fingers up and we just said sodium NA, sodium NA, sodium NA, so that I could get stuck in our brains. And then obviously magnesium is MG. So um, we sang through our song. I will link that down below. I will, sorry, <laughs> I will remind um, you if you are listening to the song down below, they have changed the question that you asked for science. Please stop. Excuse my children. Um, they have changed the question um, from what is on the song, but it's very easy to add it in. So um, if you're singing the intro, it should go, what are the first 12 elements in the periodic table by number, element, symbol, and mass? So that's how I've changed it. It works, it still fits it in. Um, but I will link that song down below and spare you me singing it. <laughs> uh, for English, we did voices. I had used 
these little voice cards um, a few weeks ago when we did Zoom and they worked pretty well. I have them numbered one through six and I let them pick a number and we flip it over and see what's on the back of it. So they are things like Volcano Voice, I added Darth Vader, I added Hold Your Nose, Hold Your Tongue, which I didn't think about that we had masks on so we just for a minute pulled out our mask and held our tongue. You could also do it where you have to say it with your tongue between your teeth. That could work too. So, um, and we just took turns letting them pick a number and we set it and did it however it said for the predicate. I also was trying to give them examples of how last week we talked about the, you know, um, Mrs. C loves ice cream. And so Mrs. C was the subject. That's who we were talking about. And so this week I was like, you know, Mrs. C loves ice cream. What are we saying about Mrs. C? And they were like that she loves ice cream. So I did give them a few examples of what a predicate means and what it, what, what we're learning that it says. So anyway, I think that's everything for this week. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome week. I hope that um, the last six weeks, can you believe it? We are three fourths of the way done. I can't believe that. So I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. We're heading up to my parents, so I have to go back. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.